Hello and welcome to another Imperator Rome Dev Diary. And today we have the patch notes. So uh, yeah, this is all it is. But there is quite a lot. And this layout on the forums is terrible because you want to read something, you're scrolling down, you're scrolling down. Oh, and it goes off the edge of the screen. So you've got to scroll all the way and then scroll. It's terrible. It's terrible. Um, so yeah, this, whatever, whatever is, is hosting this this forum I don't I don't like this it needs to not it needs to wrap around you know but that's kind of irrelevant because uh, what I did was I, I just I just opened it in notepad plus plus so now we can read it here and uh, just quickly 544 lines of patch note changes which is a significant amount I think we'll all agree but uh, yeah let's go through it um, I'm not gonna read everything because as I just said it's like 500 lines of changes and quite a lot of it we've we've actually seen before in various dev diaries this is sort of like a, just a summation of it so uh, I'll go over a little bit and I've picked out some uh, key areas that I think are noteworthy so we'll uh, we'll have a look at those as well so anyway let's uh, just go through the new features so civil wars have been reworked to be based upon the disloyal power base versus the total power base of the country. Each character has a power base that depends on their holdings, commanded units, wealth, titles, governorship, importance, etc. This value is displayed in the overview, character listings, character and family views. Lovely, works just fine. I, I like this new power base system. Looking forward to trying it out. Added coastal and river terrain types for naval combat. Uh, all countries can now convert religion if their high priest is of the new religion, and a majority of the free pops in their capital also follow it. Republics require the approval of their senate, monarchies must have 70 legitimacy, and tribes must have the approval of the clan chiefs. Uh, the ability to change religion was very sorely missing, so I'm glad to see that, for sure. Um, all, oh yeah, we've done that one. Uh, the Seleucid bloodline trait now gives a bit of a ticking province loyalty to better allow them to control their far-flung empire. Uh, definitely going to be useful for the AI, for sure. All religions now come with their own associated omens, with their own omen effects. Love it. Uh, more flavor, more differentiation between different countries is great. Um, added uh, specific omens for Hellenic countries following the Serapis cult. So that is the event... Um, where I think it's it's fired by Egypt telling them either to go away or if they... The, the event that basically lets Egypt choose if they want to be um, Hellenic or not, that's what fires the Serapis cult. And uh, yeah, if you follow, if you decide to accept the Serapis cult, I think they call them ISIS, but I'm not sure. Uh, oh yeah, demonetized by the way. Um, then you'll obviously get new omens as well. Every country in the world now has a heritage, providing it with passive benefits and a penalty. Heritages are dependent on the capital of the country, but can also be specific to other circumstances. Um, Country-specific heritages go to Rome, Sparta, Carthage, Phrygia, Macedon, Egypt, Seleucids, Mauria, Judea, Tartessos, Byblos, Armenia, Epirus, Thrace, Rhodes, Athens, Etruria, Syracuse, Icenia, Arvernia, Atropatene, Tarentum, Argos, and Thebes. I think the ones that I'm kind of... Why are they missing? Um, Byblos, there is two other Phoenician city-states. I think both of them should, at least for the meantime, share this. They should all have it. Um, I don't see any... Oh, wait, there's one British tribe, Icenia. Okay, so it's good that you have a free one. Um... Tartessos, I believe that is the Southern Iberian tribe. Um, interesting that things like uh, Emporion and Massalia aren't getting them. Uh, but it's it's okay, I guess. More will be added in time. That's fine. Uh, added the possibility of on-map eruptions for the following volcanoes. Vesuvius, Etna, Ararat, Methana, these ones, this one, this one, blah, blah, blah. You can read it there. Uh, lots and lots of volcanoes. Lovely. Volcano eruption will cause considerable damage to the local economy until it's cleaned up. Added storms that can strike at sea, in deserts, or during winter. Storms will cover over a number of sea zones or cities, will deal heavy attrition to present units. While a storm is ongoing, it will be visible on the 3D map. 
um, added navigable rivers. A navigable river can be forded at specific locations, which can be blocked like straits by a navy. Uh, light ships will be forming, will perform better than others in a river. Uh, great stuff. Legitimacy is no longer instantly increased from a button press, but it's stackable over time, uh, ticking improvement. Good. War exhaustion is no longer a button to magically decrease it. I, l I love that he's putting the word magically in there. Um, instead works like changed stability. Good. You can embark and disembark armies while in port. Good. You can view foreign characters from the Diplo view. Good. Although I, I feel like in multiplayer this is going to lead to a lot more assassinations. Rework the province view, adding more information, including pie chat, uh, peer charts. Sorry, it's peer chats. It's a peer chat, it's not a pie chart. Sorry. Sorry guys, you're not getting what you want uh, of population. Um, oh God, you you have no idea how much I need this. This is, I mean, I, I asked for a mod to be made specifically to add this kind of information. Uh, yeah, I need this, this is great. You can now tell units to start building roads and they will continue doing it as long as you have power instead of stopping in each new location to await new orders. Also fantastic, I mean, the reason that I don't build roads um, is nothing to do with the military cost of it, the, like the monarch points. Don't care about that, it's just the tedium right now is off the charts. I, I don't care enough to do it. Um, having it happen like this, totally fine. Perfect. Uh, dual rulers. Aristocratic republics now have co-consuls. Co-consuls provide power in attributes where they are better than the current ruler, and their ruling traits are applied to the country along with those of the primary ruler. Popularity of the ruler is the average of both of the consuls, while corruption is the sum of their corruption. Good stuff. Um, a lot of people have been saying, oh, this should have been under game, under game star. And I'm sorry, but like, I disagree with you there. Um, I totally buy the explanation that Johan gave, which was, it'll be in when I figure out a way to do it that is not shallow and shit. And this doesn't seem shallow or shit, so I'm totally happy with it. Um, consorts. In monarchies, the consort of the ruler will now count as a co-ruler and give benefits to the country in the form of their stats, supplanting the rulers if they are better. Consort with living children will get a ticking reduction of loyalty if the primary heir is not their child. Lovely. Uh, province and city improvements. Urban development interaction added for cities. I'm not probably going to use that, at least not until monarch points are redu uh, removed. Sorry and we can see what else it's gonna cost. Using the interaction increases local civ capacity as well as civilization growth. You can now set which unit types your clan retinue should be. Changing will update retinues as well, but strength is dropped to zero. So you can just change it on the fly, basically. Um, you start the game and you've got a huge clan retinue of trash. Just set that shit and it'll just need to tick back up. Considering it's free manpower, it's still gonna be overpowered as hell. Uh, I can just imagine, though, that this is going to increase the strength of uh, player tribes as you just set all of your tribesmen to make um, heavy infantry or horse archers if you're a, a tribe in that area, um, a Scythia or something. It's going to be super, super strong. Um, yeah, I can just imagine this being a little bit overpowered. Uh, added four province level investments that are not going to be used by me because they cost the power and the power is the terrible thing. Um, population output, provincial loyalty for military power, building slots for civic power, local import routes for oratory and same religion pop happiness for religious power. Okay. Um, naval rework. I'm not gonna read through this one because I've got an entire video purely dedicated to the naval rework. So. Um, in the in the description there's going to be a, a link to the playlist of all the um dev diary videos that i've done it's in there it's called naval stuff um provincial capitals are now fixed will never relocate naturally good provincial capitals can be moved by the player to another city cool uh for a cost yep of course added capability to release a subject country good uh country capital can now be moved for a power cost that is dependent on the difference in population between your current capital and the desired new location. Perfectly fine. Holdings rework. I do like the new holdings uh, stuff. Characters can now hold multiple holdings, limited by their capabilities, mainly finesse. 
Um, a city can also have multiple holdings, one for each ten slaves present. Unowned, um, unowned holdings can be granted to characters by the state or purchased by them over time. Holdings can... Actually, about that. Purchased by them over time. Who gets the money? Do I get the money? I want the money. That'd be nice if I got the money. Give me, give me events where he's like purchasing it or he's he's <laughs> renting the holding until he uh, he finally owns it. That'd be pretty cool. You get some money over time if somebody tries to like, you know, paying off a loan kind of thing. Holdings can also be confiscated by the state, lost to starvation or lost if a city changes hands, causing a loss of loyalty for their old owner. This loyalty modifier will last five years per lost holding. Holding pro will provide its owner with income, boosting their personal wealth over time. If more than half the holdings in a city belong to a character on the rebel side in a civil war, then that city will defect at the start of the conflict. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't notice that before. Um, yeah, having, having that there is pretty good. No longer possible to move or promote slaves if it would mean the loss of holding for a character. Eh, fine. Um... It, I think it might have even been better if you could still do that, but it would, like, seriously piss off that character. Uh, we now have Ledger, which is great. You get um, data about countries, rulers, provinces, inventions, and rulers. We have some more government interactions. I've done a dev diary on that. Or I've done, I've, I haven't done a dev diary on that. I've done a video on that. Um, so, yeah, new, new interactions for each of the uh, government types. Good. And the macro builder can, you know, when you are promoting or building something, you actually, you know, be able to see what the effect of that is going to be. And you can, you know, choose the best location to build a training camp, for example. Great stuff. Definitely want it. Um, game balance. I'm not going to go through all of these as well, um, but I have picked out the ones that I think are important, as noted by the, the blue dots. So, um, yeah. Kid, people can have more kids. It's important, you know. Um, I, I feel like this is a double-edged sword because uh, it's great for your ruling family to not have too many kids because that means you just get too many pretenders. However, when you are in the late game specifically, you can often find yourself running out of characters because people just didn't have the kids they just they just decided nope they didn't marry they didn't have kids they just did nothing and uh yeah you i often found myself especially if you have a civil war especially then that you just run out of people so having more children per couple um that's pretty good i like it it's not it's not a huge change but i think it's gonna have a huge impact Loyalty now affects how well researchers perform, um, so instead of just, oh, this guy has 13 um, martial score, I'm going to make him my martial leader. Uh, if he hates the crap out of you, then maybe don't. Um, boarding tactics is now plus 10% ship capture chance. Uh, I had this one because that's kind of awesome. At the moment, the two... Um, tactics, I guess, that you can use for your boats. Uh, I do plus 10% more damage, but I also receive 10% more damage, or I take 10% less damage, but I also deal 10% less damage. It's, it's trash. It's There's no there's no choice there. It's just nothing. So, um, yeah, having it be plus 10% ship check. Yeah, this word here, ship capture chance. Say that 10 times fast. Bet you can't. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, going down, we've got the Triplex Axes tactic is now available as the second tradition for Latin countries. Uh, if you're unaware, that is the Roman tactic um, where they had the... Oh, if I can remember the names of the different types. I think it was the Hestati in the front row, the Principe in the middle row, and then the Triarii in the third row. And basically, it was by seniority. So the youngest uh, buckos were in the front row. They had the less experience and stuff. They had their... Um, I think they were still using Gladius back then. Or they, they'd moved to it, maybe. I can't remember exactly. But anyway, uh, yeah, they had the three rows. And then basically the saying was, if the battle ever got to the, the starting in the rear row, it was pretty much lost. But um, 
yeah, having that for the Romans, I guess for the Latins, it should probably just be Romans, it's just a bit more flavor, and flavor is what the game needs, so yes, good. Um, I should have highlighted this one. Forts and friendly zone of control now saves you from attrition due to winter and terrain. This is going to be super important, and I think you're going to probably want more forts just dotted around the place, um, because you, winter especially, if you are in um, anywhere in like Armenia, uh, anywhere in northern Gaul, Britain, winter sucks. Winter is coming and it sucks. So forts saving you from that attrition, yeah, you need it. You need it badly. Um, mercenary maintenance increased by 50%. Mercenaries were already really freaking expensive and now they're even more expensive. It seems like this is being balanced around multiplayer. Um, though personally, from playing multiplayer, I find that in the early game, they're ridiculously too expensive. And in the late game, fuck it, basically. Um, colonization can now be done over two sea zones. This is not something I'd seen written anywhere else, so that's uh, that's another interesting one. Um, that means that the island of Socotra can be colonized by people that aren't tribal, you know, migrating tribes. So yeah, very interesting. Uh, trade goods. Um, I like this one, but basically all of these trade goods. Glass is now local civilization. Precious metals is city loyalty. Um, I think that one's going to be pretty desirable. Spices are for citizen output, while dye is for citizen happiness. Um, so if you've got dye, you kind of want it, because if you're playing multiplayer and you're looking for that score, citizen happiness is actually what counts more than anything else. Surplus of wood in the capital is now plus 50% ship building speed. An export is plus 20% in shipbuilding speed, so having a surplus of wood, no longer important because building speed, whether it is for cohorts or ships, is kind of useless and who cares. Um, moving down, we've got countries now get plus 50 loyalty in all current loyal states when they end up in a civil war or rebellion. So that's perfect. That's going to stop you from going into civil war spirals or rebellion spirals uh that's that's good i like it if a if a province decides to stick with you yeah having them get plus 50 loyalty sure um selling a city now removes your claim on it so you can no longer cheese by selling a city and then declaring war for the province that you just sold so that gets rid of that exploit the ai will no longer run at low maintenance if a neighbor with the player is not allied this is pretty huge, especially for early game tribal gameplay, because the meta was basically, I'm just going to get a real quick claim and declare war on you and stack wipe you in the first like month of the game. Uh, so yeah, the AI won't be at low maintenance if they border you. Uh, moving on, uh, new thing here, substantial land lost. If you're demanding 20% or more of a country, cities, and a peace deal, they'll have an extra native 10 acceptance. Um, this is an interesting one because native 10 acceptance is not very much, but you gotta think what happens when you're maybe going for a world conquest and every single point of acceptance counts. Um, I don't mind making world conquest harder. Uh, it shouldn't be possible without exploiting because otherwise the game isn't working properly in my opinion, um, so yeah, you know what, I'm fine with it. I've just seen a lot of people that are not so fine with it, and I don't care. Um, the largest, most recent land battle, with weight decaying over time, will, if won by a nation, increase their war enthusiasm by 10. That makes total sense. You win a battle, you win a big battle, then your guys are like, fuck yeah, we won a battle and now we're gonna win the war, kind of thing. Um, I'd like to see the inverse be true as well, so if um, if you lose that battle, then you get a negative 10. Maybe that's already in, though. I don't know. Uh, moving on. Uh, AI troops will now attempt to move closer to the war target before declaring if they have a land path. This should save some time for them. So yeah, you could often find yourself being declared on, and then you're on your border because you knew it was coming, and the AI just 
don't appear for a very long time. I found it quite often when I was playing um, Syracuse, and then the Romans would declare on me, and I had the time to siege their border forts before they got their troops to me. And uh, seemingly that's not going to be the case anymore, so good. Um, clinging on the top bar resources will now open the corresponding interface. Uh, what I take this to mean is if you click on your um, treasury, where you see how much money you've got, it'll open the, uh, the economy screen. Um, if you click your stability, it's going to bring you to your religious screen. Uh, great. That's just some UI stuff that, yeah, that's, that's great. I like it. Good. Uh, some more UI stuff there as well. And uh, modding. There's, there's lots of things for modders, and I love you modders, but I don't know what the hell you're doing. So enjoy, enjoy reading this, I guess. Um, yay. Uh, moving on. Um, here we go. Fixed Scythia, Maeotia, and Charesmia being the wrong primary culture. So if I remember correctly, because I did play Scythia in the multiplayer I did with Arumba for like nine episodes. Um, Scythia was Sarmatian culture, and that in all the countries around there were Sarmatian, but they should have been Scythian culture because all of the land was Scythian culture. It was just the country that wasn't. So yeah, having them be the correct primary culture is going to make them a whole hell of a lot more powerful. So if you're playing the Bosporan Kingdom, good luck. Uh, a number of starting rulers with a military past now have a more impressive character stat line. So uh, you know who this is on about. It's, Epir uh, it's Pyrrhus of Epirus, right? He has just the most mediocre military stat, and this guy is proclaimed as, like, Alexander the Great Reborn. And his military is, like, what, nine? I mean, it's not bad, but you'd want something like a 15 or a 16. I'm gonna... I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what stats they give Epirus with this. Um, change the name of cities east of Carthage to better fit reality. Um, this isn't a really big change, but I'd wanted to highlight it to point out that the devs listen to the community when they bring up small niggly details, right? Um, there was a comment I remember seeing months ago, and there's no way I'm going to be able to find it right now, but I saw this comment a long time ago, basically saying these cities, uh, this port, is in the wrong place. Uh, this city is actually over here, and this name is a little bit wrong here, and it was talking about North Africa, so I think this is directly related to that person's suggestion, which has just been like, okay, you're right, we're wrong, let's do it. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, looking, looking, at, not looking forward to it, but I, I'm glad to see that. It's a small change, but it means something more, you know? Uh, moving on, I think I've got one more, there we go. Uh, can no longer settle the same barbarian tribe an endless amount. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sorry spiffing, but uh, your exploit has been fixed. And I think that's all I've got here. Oh no, I've got one more. Achievement checking for Alexandria's lighthouse now functions even if the most ambitious version of the lighthouse was built. So now I can do my Soter achievement run um, on the 26th, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be... that's it. However, there's one more thing I want to point out. Because... As you know, I've been doing quite a lot of uh, multiplayer recently, and I continually get quite frustrated that I can't use mods. And I read through every single line of this, and there was nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with mods and multiplayer. So I wrote a comment about it. Uh, right now, it's impossible to play with mods in multiplayer. Doesn't matter if both or all players have the same mod, whether the mod is checksum changing, nothing. Multiplayer is strictly vanilla only. Can we have that changed, please? I'd rather like to play modded multiplayer at some point. And Jormungandr, who is a dev, said this has been fixed in 1.1. And that makes me very happy, because now I can use mods in multiplayer, and it's going to be glorious. So, yeah, with that, uh, I'm going to end this on a high note. <laughs> this, is, this is the highest of notes. Um, so I want to thank you all very much for watching. I will, of course, leave a link 
to this dev diary in the description below. I will also leave um, a link to the playlist where all of the previous dev diary videos have been put into a playlist for you to peruse at your pleasure. And uh, yes, I'm going to see you later. Bye bye.